Hey folks, Scott Walters here. Welcome back to the Bulletproof Garage. Today we're working on a trailer, specifically this 18 foot trailer behind me. Uh, it's a dual axle car hauling trailer with 3,500 pound axles and it's time to repack the bearings. So let's get after it. Hey folks, this is a pretty simple job. So you just need the tools that you see in front of you. Frankly, you don't even need all these. Okay folks, first things first, get a chock behind your wheel so the trailer doesn't roll when you're working on it. Next thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna jack up the trailer on the frame and put a jack stand underneath it. All right, let's get the wheel off now. Now folks, if you don't have an impact, you're gonna need to loosen the lug nuts before you lift the trailer off the ground. Otherwise, You'll never be able to get the lugs loosened. No. Okay, now we gotta go ahead and get the cap off. Um, I usually just use channel locks and go ahead and um, pry it off. All right, there's that. Now we've got a cotter pin to take out. Cotter pins out. Now you can probably just loosen this by hand. All right, this is your castle nut. And behind your castle nut, there's going to be a washer and a bearing. And that should just slide off like so, okay? So here is your washer. Sometimes it'll stick to the castle nut, sometimes it'll stick to the bearing. Um, so there's that, and there is your bearing, all right? Now, um, there's also a bearing in here, all right? Um, but the problem is that there's a seal here that is holding the bearing inside. So if we're going to do this, do this job correctly, we got to get this seal out so we can get the bearing out, okay? Okay, folks. This seal needs to come out now so we can get the bearing out, right? Um, there are a few ways to get it out. Uh, you know, you can come from the top and, um, and beat it out, but it, when you beat it out, you have to beat the bearing down. And I prefer not to hammer on a bearing, even if I'm using something soft, like a wood dowel, um, but that's an option. Um, you can also take a screwdriver and you could pry it up. Sometimes you gotta kinda take a, a hammer and whack the handle to get it up. Um, and there's also a seal removal tool. This one is a, uh, a sturdy one. It's a, the mo model number is 4508. It, I think it's OTC, all right? And so uh, you just stick that guy in there and you just work it out. All right, there you go. Now that the seal is out, there's your larger bearing. Okay folks, the parts are fresh out of the parts washer, cleaned and ready to reassemble. So let's get going. All right, let's clean the old grease off of the spindle. Folks, next thing we gotta do is we gotta inspect our bearings and we've gotta inspect our bearing races, all right? What you're looking for is pitting, discoloration, or any signs of wear, all right? This is a fairly low mile trailer um, and everything looks good here. Both the bearings look good and the races as well. Again, uh, so what you're looking for, again, pitting or discoloration, and, and I don't see any on the race here or on the race there. Now. Um, one thing that I do want to talk about, though, is 
races and bearings. Folks, they're matched sets. Uh, you really should not be putting new bearings on old races, all right? So if the races are bad, put new bearings in with new races. If the bearings are bad, put in new bearings and new races, okay? So um, they are ground, the bearings and the races are ground at a very specific angle. And if that angle is just a hair off, you're going to run into problems, okay? So again, new bearings, new races, or old bearings and old races, not mixing and matching. All right, now, uh, so we're putting together the back side here, and we're going to use, um, so that takes the larger bearing. Again, it just sits right in there in the race, right? Uh, and so the first thing we're going to do is grease it. So, uh, so this is a, a handy little tool. I mean, these things cost about five bucks, I think. Um, and, and it saves a little bit of time. All right, we'll hand pack the next one, but this one we'll go ahead and use the tool. All right, so you just put the bearing in there, tighten it up, all right? Then with your grease gun, now obviously in my grease gun, I have got bearing grease, all right? So just read the container and make sure it's compatible with wheel bearings. And it takes a few um, squeezes to go ahead and get it full of grease. You'll see the grease when it comes out though. All right, and the grease is coming through. I go ahead and give it a few extra squeezes because I want to make sure all that old grease is pushed out. All right, here we go. All right, so that bearing is definitely grease. And you can see where it's dirty here, where some of the, um, I didn't get all the old grease out. All right, so what I'm going to do is take some of this excess grease and I'm just going to coat the bearing with it. All right, and then I'm going to take some more of this excess grease and then I'm just going to put it inside the hub and making sure I get plenty on the race. I'm going to take a little bit more and I'm going to put a little bit past the race. You don't need to fill that entire void up, um, but I like to put a little bit in there just in case. All right, now, so the bearing sits right in there. All right, and next thing we got to do is tap in the seal. Okay folks, next up we got to tap the seal in. So I've got these, um, this is a grease seal 1.719 inches, all right. Uh, it costs 20 bucks for a pair of them um, and I got this at AutoZone and they were hanging on the wall in the trailer section so they weren't behind the counter. So, and on my trailer um, both of the axles take the same seal, even though I've got brakes on the other axle. Okay, so now that the bearing is in, <laughs> don't tap this in without the bearing being in, right? All right, that just slides in like so. Then you just take a block of wood and a hammer and just, just tap it in, all right? Make sure it's flush. And it is, and then I like to take a little bit of grease and just get it right inside that lip right there. All right, let's get the hub on. All right, at this point, I just take a little bit of grease, same stuff that I was using for the bearings, and I'm just going to go ahead and coat the spindle. All right, and then uh, you just go ahead and slide the hub on. All right, and that's on. And next comes the bearing and the washer, the castle nut, and the cap. Uh, but we still got to go ahead and pack that last bearing. Okay, folks, um, packing bearings by hand is pretty simple, all right? So what you want to do is you take a dollop of bearing grease and you go ahead and put that in the palm of one of your hands. And with the other hand, what you're doing is you're going to go ahead and push down. All right, so what you're doing, you see right there where I've pushed the grease into the bearing, you're pushing grease into that gap until it squeezes out the top. All right, so just keep pushing, pushing 
and eventually you're going to see grease coming through the top right here. All right, you can see it just start to come through right there. And once that's coming through, then you continue to work it around clockwise, counterclockwise, whatever works for you. But you got to make sure that that entire bearing is full of grease. Just takes a few minutes. And the bearing will take more grease than you th would think it could handle. All right, now, now that that's done, you just go ahead and slide the bearing into the hub, all right? Next up is your washer. One of the sides of your washer is likely worn from where it was sitting on the bearing, so I like to put that side right back where it came, right up against the bearing, all right? Then your castle nut. Okay, now is when it gets, I wouldn't say tricky, but this is the, the step where you need to pay attention, all right? Because what you want to make sure is you don't have any play here, all right? So let me loosen up the castle nut, and you can see the hub is moving on the spindle, so there's some play, okay? And then if you crank it down, Well, you're hardly going to be able to turn it, okay? Generally, what I like to do is I like to get it finger tight, and once it's finger tight, then I'm looking for that cotter pin hole, and I can see it right here, all right? So, finger tight, still turning fine, no play, so then I get my cotter pin and go in there. All right, now, uh, if you're sort of stuck between um, too tight and too loose, go too loose, okay? Um, too tight is going to give you more problems than a little bit too loose. So if I was, you know, if I wasn't lined up on the cotter pin um, at hand tight, then, and if I tightened it up a little bit more and I could feel more drag, I'm going to back it off, okay? All right, so then you're going to bend your cotter pin up and out of the way. All right, and then the cap. Spinning fine both ways. Good to go for another three to 5,000 miles, folks. Now you just gotta do that again for however many more axles you got. All right, folks, wheels and tires are mounted. I checked to make sure they were all spinning freely, and they are. Next thing I've gotta do is I've gotta torque down the lug nuts to spec. Once that's done, I'm ready for the next road trip. All right, now I will stop about 15 miles in the road trip and I will recheck the torque on each one of the lug nuts, okay? And remember, after that, you're doing this job again in about 3,000 to 5,000 miles. All right, that is it for this video. If you found it interesting or informative or helpful, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel. And we'll see you next time on the Bulletproof Garage.